Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch? Hi, Doctor. I've just come from the hospital. The tests are in, and you're pregnant. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Did you hear that, honey? Call me if I can be of any help with your decision. Yeah, I'll do that, Doctor. Thanks very much. another baby. Oh. I couldn't bear it. I just couldn't. No way in the world we're going to lose this child. Look. First of all, the odds are four to one against there being any problem at all this time. Honey, even if the worst happened, the baby was born with no immunities this time, we're ready. I mean, immunologists like Dr. Gunther, they know how to save these children now. But, but how can we make a decision like that? For another human being. I mean, what if... Oh, Johnny, do you think we could live with it? Oh. <laughs> there were never two people in the world more meant to be parents than you and me. God knows that. I want to believe that. Oh, I want to believe that. A baby. We're going to have a baby. Say something to your wife before. Hello, Mrs. Lubitsch. I just wanted to say, uh, I love you. Conditioning ducts and the heat vents closed, please. And no movement while the air settles. Is anybody down there planning on having an itch? Please scratch it now. Not later, please. Dr. Gunther, do we have to have all these people here? May we please clear the theater? I'm sorry, please try to understand, we're private people. Begin the cesarean. Yes. 
Mr. and Mrs. Lubitsch, he was born exactly like your first son, with no amenities whatsoever. But he's alive. How long does he have to stay in this? There's no way to know. Until we discover a treatment, until he develops an immune system of his own, he'll have to remain in his protected environment. Surely you can give us some kind of a prediction. I mean, are we talking about days or weeks or months? Years. Excuse me? Mr. Lubitsch, you may as well have it straight. We could get lucky, but your son could be here with us for the remainder of his life. looking at her. <laughs> oh, oh, you almost fell out. Did you almost I'm kind of sorry they moved next door. I want my baby. Nicky, look, suppose we could devise some way of, of transporting him safely, and we could get them to go on paying for it, and, and manage the million and one other things we'd have to the sterilization of the food and the toys and the equipment. I don't think you realize what we'd be getting ourselves into if we did bring him home. Do you? No. You stay home and get some rest. I'll give him a big hug for both of us, okay? Higher. You're a big girl, Mommy. Give me a kiss. Oh, boy. You want to play ball? You want to play ball? Get your ball. We're going to toss. You get over here, why don't you? Okay. Look out. Here it comes. Oh, good. Try it again. Now you throw it to me. Good one. Good man. Throw it right here. Oh, I wonder whether I'm going to make a pitcher or a catcher out of you. Okay, Tony, throw me a nice high. There. There you go. There you go. Hey, look who's here, Tony. It's Mommy. Surprised to see me? No. No? What about you, short stuff? Huh? Are you surprised to see Mommy? Yeah. You are? Oh, I bet I can here. do something fun to you. I bet I can tickle yeah. you and make you giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she? Come here. Come here. Oh. Do you know how much your Mommy and Daddy love you? Do you? Do you really? Look at that. Do you know how much Mommy and Daddy love you? Do you? And how much we want you all to ourselves? I love you. Oh. I want to get him again. I want to get him again. Will you want to give me another kiss? Give me a kiss. You're 
come. Hurry up, set up. I got the microphone. Are we rolling? Pick up the ambulance. Little Todd Lubitsch, a child who has never felt his parents touch except through the walls of this plastic bubble, and who may not for years to come, is finally coming home for the first time today. Mr. Lubitsch, doctor. Uh, please, Mr. everybody, we, we appreciate your interest, but it's exactly what we're trying to get away from. Here's Hang tight, you have a nice ride. Here you go. Would you back up, everybody, please? Mrs. Lubitsch, how do you mind backing up just a little bit? Oh, my, I didn't realize he was so big. Mm -hmm. Isn't he adorable? Gina, come on back here. Well, you have to live in that thing for very long. Please, you know. no pictures. No. What is it like, Mrs. Lubitsch? Look, Never I've asked you to nicely see. three times. Now, will you just leave us be? Mr. Lubitsch, won't you come out again and, and give us... Okay, let's take one more step. I'm going to knock your damn head off. Now, get out of here. Come on. All of it. Back up. My son's not a freak. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, filters and fans. You're okay. All right, backup generator. It's okay. Let's see, breaker and fuse panels. That's all right. Okay, and intercom system. Right, that's it. Are you sure we have checked everything? Well, everything except the champagne. Huh. Yes, guys. Huh? <laughs> well, um, in that case, uh, I'm, I'm just going to tuck him in and I'll, I'll see you in a minute. Gotcha. Okay. Good night, Daddy. Come on, Daddy. It's night, night time. Come on. That's my darling. Night, night time. Okay, and you have pleasant dreams. You talk to your teddy bear, okay? Mommy loves you. I'll see you in the morning. Ooh, ow. Champagne okay. Our number's not listed. 
Well, we were just waiting for the proper time to say hello. I'm Pete Biggs, my wife Martha, and uh, daughter Gina. We live right next door there. Yes, I know. I should have been the one to welcome you into the neighborhood, but... Uh, Here. It's a welcome home present for your little boy. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, please come in. Uh, I'm sorry when I haven't been that friendly, but we just don't have that many visitors. There, that's good, Daddy. Now put the blue one here. See if you can stack another blue one on. Oh, you're going to put it up there, huh? Honey. Oops, oops. Here, try the... Honey, look who's that's here. Good. The bigs from next door have come over to welcome Todd home. Oh, look, Toddy. Hey, Toddy. Come yeah, on. Look over there. Toddy, look who's here. This is Gina. Come say hello to Gina. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gina's brought you a present which Daddy's going to sterilize. Hi. Hey, hey come on over here, Gina. Toddy. Come on, say hi to Gina. Come on, Toddy. Yeah. Oh. Let it go. Let it go. Oh, he's not hurting you. He's just playing with you. Is this your playhouse? Can I come in? Can I? Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Gina, what do you want to do? I don't know. You want to go down the dock? It must be real weird living right next door to that kid. Oh, no, not really. Like, I hardly ever see him except for birthdays and stuff. Mm -hmm. Half the time he's at the hospital anyway. Mm -hmm. Come on. Super vanity. watching television, you know? He never comes out of his room. Does he have any friends? Mm -mm. Just old people. Like friends of his parents. A bunch of doctors that come over. And some minister or something comes over once in a while. But no kids or anything. Oh, he has this little pet germ-free mouse, too. Don't you ever wonder what it's like in there? I mean be all by yourself like that yeah yeah i know but he's weird you know like i'm surprised he isn't looking at us right now every time i look up there he's looking right at me today's record john on an auspicious beginning with the last and nasa hopes the longest of the three skylab captain hey captain elements under their how are you Huh? The astronauts breathe through their doors. However, the repair of the bowl-shaped radar antenna proved a more difficult task. Located on the underside of Skylab's multiple docking adapter section, the antenna is used to measure irregularities in ground temperatures and the shape of the Earth. Performing like an acrobatic team, they worked for three hours on the faulty antenna till it was finally free enough to do most of its programmed Earth scanning job. Earlier today, after the astronauts docked their command module with Skylab, they settled in and started their housekeeping chores. After a rest period of two hours, they had their first meal in Skylab. Hello, Ricky. Good afternoon, Ernie. Please come in. Todd. Good afternoon, Ernie. And how are we feeling today? My main reason for driving out here today, instead of waiting for your monthly checkup, there's some news I think you might like to hear. 
Queen's in check, Ernie. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, a doctor in Tokyo believes he may have found a treatment that might stimulate the development of the humoral and cellular antibodies. What kind of research has he done? Mm, so far, not too extensive. But by the middle of next good year... Good news, Ernie. Keep me posted, will you? You really got it made, haven't you? Why do you say that? 